Hey everyone, we are back. If you watched my previous video, you'll realize not much time has passed. Because, well, uh, you also see the video clips I put in. Uh, you're gonna check out that video for those. Um, that, um, we are not <laughs> gonna be hiking Carl Sandburg for a very long time. Uh, there are a lot of trees down. And fortunately, the only other way up and around the hiking trail, actually maybe I can go in the other parking lot. I'll try that next weekend. Um, but <laughs> they are, um, uh, you're not, you're not hiking. I'm like, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to go jump up and over trees. Like there's some two foot, oh, come on, make this. I'm sorry guys, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> the car is going too slow. <laughs> uh, didn't want to get stuck at that light. Anyways. Um, what am I trying to say? Yeah, so I'm not afraid to go up and over limbs and stuff, but I'm not gonna walk through water and tightrope a tree as a bridge to go out and do that. It's not, at least not on a regular basis. Like one time, sure. Um, yeah, especially with my dog with me. It makes it even more difficult. He would just walk through the water and get all muddy. <laughs> Anyways, maybe I can, uh, well actually the park is entirely closed. And so, uh, it's probably, it's gonna be a while they open it and so unfortunately not gonna be able to do that for a while I need to go find somewhere else to go hike um, that's the main place to go on this side of town I will see if we can find another place oh yeah we'll show you all the other um, down lines and places that are flooded and everything else this this whole area was lines down constantly in this area but they've cleaned up like you can hardly tell there, there are a lot of trees down here before, and you can hardly tell now. Let's see, there's a tree right here. It's still here. And, uh, and one thing I'm certain is they need more training data with uh, when lights are out. And surprisingly, it actually kind of worked. See, look at this. This is not. I'm, 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 I'm accelerating here. Like it can't stop from blinking yellow. A blinking yellow is a caution light, not a stop light. Now, if it's a blink blinking red, it's a stop. However, I think something with these, it might be have to do with hardware three, the cameras, because it seems to see the yellow as red. It gets the color wrong. And I'm not sure there's something, I, I don't know why. It's, it, someone much smarter than me would have to explain it, why that happens. Because it seems like, if humans don't stop for those types of scenarios, why would the car stop for a blinking yellow? Unless it can't distinguish yellow from red, you know, it's like colorblind. In which case, okay, well, we have a problem. That was appropriate. So was that. Okay. Now, I'm probably just going to make the two videos today, and again, I'm going to try and make the crazy hill test. It, look at this giant tree that's down here. I drove this way a couple times. Um, this, this is one of the first areas to get back power. It still took like three or four days for this area to get power back. And like I said in the last video, it took me 12 days to get power back. Very thankful, though. And, um... Yeah, there's still a lot of lines that have replaced a lot of poles, a lot of lines. Still, see, look, this line is completely down. This, is, I think, is a data line, though. Maybe that's why. And it might not actually be affecting anything right now. Just there's, that's just this area. This area is, you know, will be 90% back to normal here in, within a couple more weeks, probably. It'll have all the... Oh, we got a power... Oh, let's see what it's going to do. It's probably not... Is it going to do it right? Yep, that's not power, that's cable and internet, but power, it looks like it's power up ahead, though. Okay, so I got that good. Got some edge cases here, in a way. They're not super rare edge cases. You have utility men working on, on a fairly regular basis. You know, once a year, you'll you'll probably run into that. But as much as I saw it last week, I, I was running into constant, ed like... I, I wish I recorded it. I, I probably five edge cases in a row. Just something you would not see, like a bridge completely washed out. Like I didn't know the bridge was washed out, and I had to back up and turn around. The car was gonna fail there. There was also no telephone lines down in there. A car has to be able to distinguish a, a power line that's hanging in the middle of the road. That's like 
I would run into if I didn't go around it. It has to be able to see that type of detail, you know? Now, of course, maybe they can always, that's not going to prevent a robo-taxi. It will prevent level 5. Level 5 has to be able to handle that. If, if Tesla's not going to do go the levels, they're going the Apple route to simplify everything. You know, how they do marketing and all that stuff. They're not going to do levels. But if you want to do a specific levels of capability, level 4 can be a self-driving car in a specific area and can be ge geofenced. Level 5 cannot. Level 5 have, has to be able to do everything a human can do. If a human can drive around a down power line, if a human can handle this traffic stop scenario here, then so should full self-driving. Let's go ahead and just have my hands on the wheels, you know. Yeah, was able to handle that. Now, if it didn't have a lead car, I'm not so certain. But yeah, I handled that pretty well for lead car right there. Yeah, so in this area right here, you see this Publix right here? Um, I mean, actually, actually, I'm gonna stop there real quick to go grab, grab, see if they have a uh, food item I want. <laughs> yum yum sauce. If you, if you uh, might shrimp sauce, that's the best. Anyways, but yeah, all this area was underwater, like, Okay. A little bit earlier to the point on. This this all oh, this is a flood zone right here, so it always floods, but it was exceptionally bad. Like I'm pretty sure the Haas Heidelberg right here was um their entire building like probably covered the roof. Oh that was great. I am gonna make a pit stop though here in um Publix. Hey everyone, I just wanted to kind of show how dumb this was. Um Matt wanted me first to go straight, <laughs> which, <laughs> as you can see, it can't exactly go straight. <laughs> like, look, like, look at this. Why is it? You can go just that way. They really need to work on parking lot map data. I don't understand why it does that, but let's see if it can make it out of this parking lot here. Obviously, not counting disengagements in terms of like, like honestly. At this point, I might stop tracking the disengagements because the routes are so screwed up from the st yeah. yeah, see. Like, it, it should know. The car could exit right here. It was The map data is bad. It just didn't realize it can exit right here. Okay. Yeah, you can go. I'm just making it go. I guess I'm a little bit impatient <laughs> right now. And that car was turning off anyway. Okay. Yeah, so I might not track that anymore. I might just... Uh, tell me what you guys think if... If, um, if uh, maybe occasionally tracking it or something. But the storm has really screwed up a lot of the roads. So it's really, really difficult to give accurate assessments anymore on these test routes. I think in time they will be back to normal and then you can assess it, but... At this point, basically, what you what we need to look for is like, can you go on any random route, and can the car make it without disengagements or interventions? You know, the route's going to be kind of the same, but that's that's the goal. We're getting so good now that most of the time we're not going to have interventions. I, I'll speak it. You know, if I press the pedal, or if I have to, you know, adjust speed. You're obviously seeing me adjust the speed up here, but it's just. What is it doing? Is, is that road really blocked off right there? I don't... The map... See, there's the thing. If I go between my house and my parents, the road... No. We're not doing this. The road is not blocked. There's no way that road is blocked. Okay. Now... Okay, see what... The map data... Either Tesla is, is forcing different map data to get training data for the cars, or the storm has completely messed up um, the map data around Hendersonville. I'm not sure what it is. It's coincidental with uh, Hurricane Helene coming through, but look, obviously nothing is wrong with this road. This is the quickest route. There's no reason it should have gone the other way. And you go to my parents, it goes just way out of your way, just like it doesn't make any sense at all. 
So we can go straight. Um, right in the pothole still. Anyways, um, it doesn't make any sense at all. So, I, I don't know why it does that and without maybe they're trying to get new training data. Um, and perhaps you t you guys tell me if you if you want me just to follow the routes that it goes, or if you just want to stay consistent routes, that would be that would be helpful. I'll see you once back home. Everyone, let's see how we do on the rest of the trip. This will be the only other video today unless we do the crazy hill test. I don't know what I'm doing here. Just trying to avoid the pothole that I just ran into. I wish it would fill it up. Anyways, there's a car coming. Let's see if it tries to go. No, <laughs> and it won't let me. Like, I don't know why it wants to launch out of this parking lot because yeah, it thinks it's clear. So, that was definitely disengagement. I'm not gonna try just these videos, everyone. I'm just not gonna record the disengagements or anything. You, you can hear them in here. Um, no, you can hear what, hear what's going on. Um, just, you know, just to get a video out, just until, until everything's kind of a little bit more back to normal in town, just kind of just more about talking about Tesla and, you know, what's going on, about how the car is performing. And this is really for hardware three more than anything. And import unfortunately, I'm one of the, still one of the only hardware three cars left. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, don't know your name, but Tesla Geek from um, in Chicago area. He has a Hardware 3 car as well, like 2019. So, not many of us left at Hardware 3 cars. I think uh, Kaz does too. I think he's down in Florida now. Um, but yeah, so not many left. It is awesome, awesome though. Um, just being able to test, test these early software versions. And the fact that I can just sit here and just the car will drive me vast majority of miles it's gonna be something extra special when you can literally just you're sitting in a parking lot you go whoop <laughs> it backs up goes out of the parking lot gets into the road this is where where I'm just not gonna be strict on the routes anymore just because um, if I be strict on the route then it's gonna have to go out the same way out of the parking lot each time and that's not reasonable it really isn't Obviously not counting that blinker. I wanted to pull over and park. It's getting far too hot in here now. Okay, it's... It's gonna run the light again. Why can't... It, and I can't leave feedback. This is really dumb. Um, did this happen? I have this on another video. It was gonna run this light. I don't know. I didn't look to see if it had a, um... There, like it's still like this is that, like that's disappointing like I know as a human I've seen human pilot run these lights so as a human humans do run these lights because they don't see them because the lights are in a weird spot you don't see the light and um yeah that's disappointing that the car still runs red lights this was on a 12.5.4 I think it ran that light and this is 12.5.4.1 so obviously it didn't change anything I it seems repeatable too. It's the same exact light that I failed to run, and all these it catches. So that's really interesting. I guess because it goes around that bend in the road, that it gets stuck there. It's so interesting. I was doing really well. <laughs> Let's see if it's gonna navigate in here. It needs to fix this map data, right here. Yep, see, it's not going to do it. Eventually, like, to my opinion, robotaxis have to ha have that type of detailed map data correctly. That's not HD maps. That's just getting normal map data correct. I, I really think it would fix a lot of problems if they just would enhance this map data. May Hopefully they start siphoning in this these disengagements and fixing this stuff soon enough. It doesn't make any sense because, like, you know, as a robot taxi, you know, the really, especially if it's a, your own, like, if my Model 3 becomes a robot taxi, it sh needs to be able to park. Uh, it, it, 
can't just roam around the city the whole time. It could. You could tell it just to roam around. Or I could just go extend it off. Like, if there's a festival here, I don't want to pay $5 of parking. I mean, I could even go send it back home. And say, here, pick me up in four hours. And then it'll show back up. You know, that's a, that is a waste of energy to go do that. Or you could just send it down to, you know, you could just send it down over here to one of the large parking lots that are right here. Send it to the supercharger to sit. You know? That's, it's just, you have to really think outside of the box of the different ways you can use a robotaxi because you don't have to park somewhere. It can drop you off in the most convenient location and then immediately keep driving away. And you can, you know, it can go in the park seek mode. It could, it could, um, I gotta get over, get over, get over. There you go. And someone said it's like, oh, it's gonna try and go in the parking lot. It's definitely not gonna go and try it in this parking lot. Anyway, guys, um, well, that's that route. You can see kind of some of the stuff that's happened around Hendersonville. Um, you know, Hendersonville got spared for the most part. It had a lot of wind. Normal areas that flooded, flooded. But not anything overly crazy here. Uh, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next video.